Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Christy and my channel is all about the intentional focus on money and mindset to decrease stress and increase joy and happiness in our lives. And I wanted to talk about something that was kind of fun and also near and dear to my heart. And uh, so there's a kind of a funny aspect to it, but at the same time, it's something that causes a lot of stress for a lot of people. And that is this idea of savers and spenders. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about turning a spender, and that would be me, um, into a saver or reform spender, um, however you want to look at it. But it is a little bit about my journey in uh, being a spender my entire life and some of the things that have really helped me change that mindset to become more of a saver, if such a thing as possible. Because I do think that we grow up with a very, I don't know, it, it, it's what we see in the world around us and from our parents and from our family and our friends that influence how we think about what we do with our money when it comes into our hands. You know, do we immediately spend it or do we have that inclination to put it in the bank and save it? And so I start thinking about things like the, the scarcity mindset and the abundance mindset. And if these two things are not balanced in the way that you think, you can kind of over index on one or the other. And I do think there's, there's pros and cons uh, for both concepts and both mindsets if you keep them in balance. But I have always been a spender. Spenders, raise your hands. Uh, and I, as I look back on my childhood, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that I did not grow up in a family that had a lot of money. Um, I My mom was a single mom for most of my childhood and she worked three jobs and worked really hard, you know, to keep a roof over our heads and food on the table, which these things you don't realize when you're a kid necessarily, you really understand it when you become the adult and you're doing those same things. But, you know, my mom worked really hard to, to provide for me and my younger brother until she remarried when I was 12. But what I remember seeing was, and, and feeling, was that feeling of not having a lot of money. And that definitely was the case. And so as I started to uh, get a, my first job, you know, my second job, and I started having money, my parents didn't educate me on how to manage my money. And I think that's, that's not uncommon. It's not a ding on them. Um, they weren't taught this either. It's just not something that I think is generally taught to kids today around how to manage their money because we didn't get that. And so it's really hard for us to, you know, prepare the next generation for the same thing. You know, ironically, I was having a conversation earlier this week with my stepson and we were talking about uh, he'd gotten a Christmas bonus and there was, you know, a little something he wanted to buy, but then he had extra money and he wasn't sure what he was going to do with it. And so I started talking to him about a Roth IRA and I just think, what if I had done that when I was 18? You know, compound interest and all these things I know now, like if I could go back in a time machine, I totally would and I would take advantage of the whole idea of uh, compound interest. But he had never heard of a Roth IRA. He had no idea what that was or what that could do for him. And so it was kind of a really fun conversation. You know, he's 18 years old, starting to help him think about how he can um, you know, start having more of those saver tendencies, something that I definitely did not have. So once I had a job, going back to my story, once I had a job um, and I started making some money and without any financial education, I'd also gotten a loan on a car when I was 16 with my parents co-signing. And then this thing happened where I started getting mail from credit card companies, you know, when I turned 18. And without any kind of financial education or money management behind me, you know, this just starts looking like free money. And I started applying for every credit card that, you know, came my way. And because I had established credit because of this loan uh, for my car, I got myself into a very big hole very quickly. 
And so when I was 22, you know, and I was working three jobs, trying to just pay my bills, you know, that was three jobs just to like pay my bills. I sat down with an older, wiser friend of mine, um, a business owner who had told me she would go over my finances. She would help me create a budget. She would help me pay, you know, everything. And as she went across all of my finances, um, she just said, Christy, this is just, it, it's a hole that you're, if you can get out of it, it's going to take you a lot of time and a lot of work and your best bet at this point in time, maybe to, to declare bankruptcy. So I was 22. I didn't know a lot, you know, looking back, is that the, the thing that I necessarily would have decided to do? Probably not because of the ultimate ramifications in my life for the next 10 years um, of having to declare bankruptcy. But that's what I did. And I think that was a really big wake up call for me just around, you know, I, I, I never wanted to be in that position again of feeling so out of control of my finances that I had to declare bankruptcy. So I would say that I changed a little bit. Um, in that I started making sure I was always on time and paying all my bills. And it, that was a habit I took out uh, and I changed um, after that whole situation when I was 22. But I still wasn't getting ahead. Um, I was still spending. So I mentioned in, um, in my number one game changer for my money in 2020 video, which I will link to below, I mentioned that I had a bill tracker spreadsheet. And, and I've, so I had that spreadsheet and I made sure, that's the reason I made sure all of my bills were always paid on time. I was always at least making enough money to be able to pay my bills and I would never get behind again. But then I wasn't having a plan for any of my other money. So if I had, you know, some extra money, uh, hey, a new handbag, hey, a new, you know, pair of shoes. Oh, hey, you know, let's go on a vacation. You know, that it, it was never... I was never thinking about how I could really set myself up for success in the future. Um, buying a house, a too big house, a house that we didn't need. You know, that was another thing that then became house poor. So any money that I had was, you know, trying to just keep the lights on in the house. It, I, I made a lot of really bad decisions because again, like my general tendency is to spend. It's definitely what is not and hasn't been to save. So it wasn't until uh, three and a half years ago uh, that I all of a sudden had this really big wake up call that a lot of people will call their why. So as people really start turning all of this really positive energy towards increasing income and paying down debt, the very first principle that they will always talk about anybody that you watch or, or that you um, read, they will talk about you know finding your why. My why came in the form of my son. And I was an older mother, so I was 41 when my son was born. And I realized that I was at a point in my life where financially I was just a mess. You know, and then uh, going through a divorce, coming out of that with just a lot of consumer debt, a lot of debt in general, even though I have a great job, I make a great income, I just wasn't in a position to get ahead because I wasn't changing my habits. And so slowly but surely, you know, that's when I found um, Dave Ramsey. That's when I started uh, really getting smarter about how to manage money better. Financial literacy is, it, it's just so key in really helping you identify strategies to help you get better. It was baby steps all along the way. You know, a year and a half ago, I cut up all of my credit cards. Um, I had my bill tracker, you know, so I was always making my payments on time, even after, you know, I stopped using my credit cards completely. That was, you know, a baby step, but a big step for me in terms of my spending habits. And then for a while, I would say I kind of hoarded my money, um, wasn't putting it to good use, and really kind of came through all of that with the idea that I needed to pay down my consumer debt so I could open up money in my budget to be able to do things like what I'm doing right now. So it's been a journey. You can't just flip a switch and one day 
go from being a spender to being a saver. I just don't think that happens. I do think once you find your why and that becomes really solid for you, you become so hungry for that, that all of your energy and everything that you want to do, you want to drive towards that goal. So some of the things that I started, I've started doing now is I've started um, investing in a 529 for my son, for my son's college, and I'm putting extra money into that. I be, I feel like I became an adult on the day that I got life insurance, which is, I know it's super silly, but at the same time, you know, planning for if something happens to me, I know that my son will be able to be financially taken care of and he won't need to, you know, worry about anything. I have him set up for success if I'm no longer there. So getting life insurance and, you know, paying every month for a life insurance policy and then also I talked in, in that other video around my number one game changer around the idea of sinking funds. And there are a couple, I think I have 12 different sinking funds right now, varying from things like my car registration. Um, there are four months every year where there is an, addit an additional week in the month, which means I have an additional week of daycare that I have to pay. And every time that month comes up and I look at that on the calendar, I would feel stress. And so now I have a sinking fund that a little bit comes out of every paycheck to be able to take care of that extra week that happens four times a year. I also have a sinking fund for a vacation and for things like uh, beauty because like, you know, when I get my hair done a couple times a year, just being able to have that money already set aside and already saved has made me so excited about the idea of saving that I just want to keep doing it. I find that even on my regularly budgeted items, like I do have an eating outline item in my budget, I don't want to spend that money. Um, I mean, I'm spending a little bit, but nowhere near what I used to because I want to take every dollar I have and I want to save it. Uh, and then I'm getting into, you know, in January and February, I'm going to start looking at investing and, you know, doing some other things with my money. But it is such a great feeling. I would say it's this, maybe it's a saver's high. I don't know, but it is, it, it's just made me feel really empowered and fantastic. And that's what's going to continue to keep me going along with my why. You know, my why is definitely embedded in what I want to do and how I want to set things up for my future and my son's future specifically. Uh, but then that's been how I've been able to change my mindset from being a spender to being a saver. So I would love to hear in the comments below if you are, a, are you a spender or are you a saver, you know, and are you looking to change that mindset a little bit? How do you feel about that? Let's start a conversation in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And, you know, again, I'm settling into, you know, creating and uploading these videos. So I don't have an upload schedule quite yet, but it is coming. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Bye.